and to Wei Qi, his disciple. All right. Now that stage belongs to me. What is it? Self-realization, absolute purity. Now, what do we have here now? Of course, you need my figure back. All right. Now, this last stage, that's what we're looking at. This belongs to him, right? That last stage. It's the stage of self-realization, absolute purity. I can use the shining brilliantly. That's heaven. Krishna is the Sanskrit word for heaven. Right? It shines brilliantly. Right? It shines brilliantly. Its rays of light move forward like a mass of fire. Right? Bright colored, charming, auspicious, transforms the all that is. Therefore, what we have here is a doctrine of mind only that has a set of characterizations. We can characterize it, we can say we can name it, we can name it in this way. This, therefore, allows us to say there is, in fact, a realization. Therefore, this person realizes that this is nothing other than, in the highest sense, the self, self-realization. It's an absolute purity, shining brilliantly. Its rays of light move forward. What is this, and to what can we liken it? I'd like to introduce three ideas. The first idea is, goes back to Arjuna in the 11th book of the Gita. Before the unfoldment of the entire universe in time, he has a, a most brilliant light experience, which he describes as, it's as if 10,000 suns were suddenly blazing itself in the heavens. That's a light experience, right? That's a light experience. Certainly. I'd like to think now if we can go back to perhaps a talk we had once before about the Tibetan Book of the Dead. In the Tibetan Book of the Dead of the Evans Vents between 96 and 99, they make two interesting distinctions. Intellect consciousness. Now, this word shines brilliantly can be understood in two ways. And the Tibetan Book of the Dead is a clear example of how these terms can be used. Intellect when it's pure when you can turn about and, and see the very nature of the intellect itself. That's a turning about, that's a turning about, a power of vritti, this is still a turning about. At that point, it's called an experience where one recognizes the thrilling, shining nature of the intellect itself. Now, there are two uses of the word light and brilliant. One is clearly the example we're just using. The other is much more profound, I think. Well, perhaps we can talk about it. 
Sometimes when you're out on a very, very clear, sharp day, cool day, perhaps in the mountains, and you can be suddenly struck by the wonder of a certain brilliance that isn't light. It isn't light. It, 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 isn't, the, it isn't something that is shining. It has a, numin it has a, a numinal quality to it, like a numinosity to it. It is pure. It's empty. They describe that as pure consciousness in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. These are two different experiences, therefore. Some of the same terms can be used for both, but the one set in its totality cannot be used to describe the other. Third case. In Plato, in the Republic, and in part of the Phaedrus, he talks about the difference between the good itself, or the one, and the idea of the good. Now, as you undoubtedly know, it is a mistake to use the word idea as if it were a concept. It should all be always used as a capital, because the word idea is a Greek word. It hasn't, it just hasn't even been anglicized. Idea. It means to behold. It means to see, to behold. So with the experience of to behold the good is described as the most brilliant light of being. That's what this is called. The most brilliant light of being. Now, the most brilliant light of being has such power and immensity that in the allegory of the cave, when anyone comes, has the experience, it's so overpowering, it strikes them with, with such tremendous, such uh, over, over, overpowering experience that one has to adjust to it. It's an overwhelming experience. Now, the good, also called the one, and this can be found in Plato as well as Plotinus and Proclus, especially uh, Plotinus. Uh, I should add before I go, uh, you can find this very clearly in Plotinus. Plotinus talks about an idea that sparkles and glows. That's what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a luminosity, an experience of luminosity. Um, now, when he talks about the good and the one, he says, no predicates are possible. No predicates are possible. Can't call it light, can't call it anything. It's beyond all classification, no possible way. You can't even say it is reality. It's beyond reality. Now, here again we have something that shines brilliantly in the idea of the good. We have it in Plotinus. We have it in Proclus. The good itself is beyond all categories. Therefore, it's beyond all dualisms. Now, you can also say the experience of the luminosity that one experiences as pure intellect or mind, there's also a non-duality because the uh, knower and known are one. No distinction between knower and known because there isn't any separation. There's an all-encompassing, engulfing light experience. And if you uh, enjoy making comparisons,